Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so example three here. So we're gonna work with an inner product uh, defined on polynomials as I pr had promised. Um, all right, uh, now uh, the um, vector space we're gonna work with is um, polynomials of degree two with real coefficients. And um, the standard basis for that uh, is this here. And so we're gonna turn this standard basis into an orthonormal basis uh, using the Gram-Schmidt process, yeah? Okay, cool. All right, now let's define our inner product in this manner. Very, very important that uh, throughout the rest of this video, you remember that this is the way we define our inner product, right? Okay, uh, that's to say that uh, this this here is what we're gonna use in this part, uh, in this part, and in this part, and anywhere else that we need it, um, all right? Okay, cool, and we're gonna need it elsewhere uh, other than those three parts. Anyway, anyway, uh, as usual, we start with V1 equaling W1, which in this case is one, and then we observe that the norm of V1 squared is equal to this here, and the reason is because we know that the norm of V1 squared is the inner product um, between V1 and itself, so the inner product between V1 and uh, V1, uh, but then the way we defined our inner product here, that means that um, f of x is v1 and g of x is v1, and that is f of x is 1 and g of x is 1. Therefore, inside of the integral, we'd get 1 times 1, and therefore 1 squared. Um, okay, cool. And clearly, the integral here is 2. All right, good to know, because now we're on our way to figuring out what v2 is. Uh, in particular, we know that this here, this denominator here is 2. Uh, we know that this here, v1, is 1. And uh, we know that uh, W2 here uh, is um, X, right? Okay, but uh, we need to figure out what this is uh, right here, uh, the inner product between W2 and uh, V1. And of course, for that, we're going to use uh, this inner product that we've defined. But let's summarize everything we know so far in writing this, yeah? Okay, cool. And so again, uh, the only thing left um, uh, that we need to figure out before we say what V2 is is this here, which again is um, W2 uh, V1 inner product, yeah? This here. Um, so using the way um, we defined our inner product, um, we see that uh, the inner product between uh, W2 and V1, this here, would have to be this here, which in turn is equal to zero because um, basically the integral from uh, a, negative A to A, the integral from negative A to A of any odd function is zero. That's the easiest way I can say why this is equal to zero, but you could also do it. You could um, actually compute the integral like carefully and see that it's zero, but yeah, uh, if it's better that we say that the integral from negative A to A of any odd function is zero because we're gonna need that fact again a little bit later. All right, let's move on. So uh, now that we've got this handy, uh, it means that we know what V2 is completely. Um, and this is V2, um, that is V2 is X, yeah? Okay, cool, all right, um, so far matching, all right, and so um, let's see, what is V3 going to be? Uh, well, in order for us to figure out what V3 uh, is, notice that we need to know what the norm of V2 squared is, uh, and we also know, need to know what uh, the inner product between W3 and V2 is, um, and we need to know the inner product between W3 and V1. We already had uh, the norm of uh, V1 squared from earlier. It was 2. Uh, we clearly know W3 is um, x squared. And yeah, so everything else in here we, we know other than the norm of V2 squared and this inner product and this inner product, yeah? Well, the norm of V2 squared is this here. And that's again uh, because um, f of x would be v2 and g of x would be v2. And so that would be t times t here. And that's t squared. And so if you do um, the integral here, you're going to get 2 thirds. Uh, and it's because it's t cubed over 3. Plug in 1, you get a third minus negative a third. That's a third plus a third, which is 2 thirds. Right? Okay, cool, cool. Um, all right. And uh, so next, uh, we figure out what uh, this is, which is uh, the inner product between W3 and V1. And so again, we're using this definition here, but clearly in here, we're gonna get uh, T squared times one. And when we integrate, we're gonna get two thirds. And so, um, yeah, like, and in, in, it just coincidentally turned out to be the same as this here, but yeah. Okay, um, next, we're gonna need to figure out what this inner product is right there, right? 
Okay, cool. And um, this inner product right there is going to be, it's going to be uh, this here, right? Um, and uh, V2 is X and um, W3 is X squared. So we get uh, T squared times T, which is T cubed. Earlier, I stated that the integral from negative A to A of any odd function, i.e. T cubed, uh, is equal to zero. So we're going to use that here. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. So now we know all the pieces to figuring out what V3 is. So um, let's get on with it. Uh, V3 is this. Um, first, this, which is basically substituting in here um, everything that we have figured out, right? Um, and um, yeah, and once you simplify, you get this for V3. And that's that. So uh, we already had uh, that V2 was X. And from the start, we knew that um, V1 was 1, and we have here what V3 is, so we're done with the Vs. Uh, the only thing left to do is turn the Vs into um, Us, and that's just making the Vs uh, unit vectors, right? All right, um, so I'm going to do it with a V2, and then you could figure out how to do it for the others. Um, so for V2, it's going to be... Um, uh, well, we're going to turn V2 into uh, U2, so it's going to be, for U2, it's going to be uh, V2 divided by the norm of V2. Earlier, we'd worked out that the norm of V2 squared was um, two-thirds, and so then the norm of V2 is going to be the square root of two-thirds, and this uh, uh, right here, then, is going to simplify to this, and so that's that. I'm done here. I hope you enjoyed this um, video series, and uh, uh, more importantly, I hope you learned a lot, yeah? All right, cool. Um, take care and keep watching.